All right, so in this lecture we're going to see how to use the TI-83 Plus to do correlations, the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. The TI-83 and the TI-84 and the TI-84 Plus all work exactly the same, so just follow along here and we'll see it. You'll notice on the white sheet of paper the first thing that we have are two sets of data the predictor variable and the criterion variable. The predictor variable is the x variable would be graphed on the x-axis of a scatter plot and the criterion variable is plotted on the y-axis of a scatter plot. We're going to need to, uh, in addition to the correlation, we're also going to need the basic summary stats here, the means and standard deviations of both predictor and criterion variables. I'm going to be putting the predictor data into list 1 in the TI-83 Plus and in list 2 we'll put the criterion data. Now notice in correlation research we have two measures on one person or two measures on a say a, a married couple something like that so that we have two measures that are correlated or co-related. What this means is that the 14 you see here in list 1 is from the same subject as the 43 in list 2. The 12 in list 1 is from the same subject as the 65 in list 2 and so and so forth. So it's important that we keep these uh, on the same row together when we put them in the calculator. Let's turn on the calculator and enter the data into list 1 and list 2. What I see here when I turn it on is left over from the other day, so I just go into stats and edit, and I see I've got data here, so I need to eliminate this data, and since there's only a few, I'll just hit the delete key three times, and they're gone. We can now enter the data. I've got a 14, and I press enter, 12, enter, 17, enter, 18, enter, 11, enter, 13, enter, and 19, enter. Uh, that gives me eight scores, I see here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I see what it is. It says eight here, but I haven't put in the eight, so I have seven scores I've put in. We can now move to list two using the scroll over key. Scroll to list two, it jumps to the top as you can see here, and now we can enter the list two data. We have a 43, enter, 65, enter, 32, enter, 28, enter, 60, enter, 40, enter, and 30, enter. And we double check, make sure our numbers are in fact what we intended, 11 to 60, yes, 13 to 40, and 19 goes with the 30. Good to go. They're now in the calculator. We now press stat button again. We see edit, calc, and test. And the first thing we need to do is go ahead and calc. So we'll scroll over to highlight the calc area. And we'll select two bar stats this time. We have list one, list two. We scroll down to the number two for two bar stats. Let me zero in on this and give you a close-up view. In fact, I'm going to move this whole paper out of the way. And there you see we're going to be using the calc function. So I press stats, I then scroll to calc, I then scroll down to the number two for the two bar stats. When I'm at the two bar stats, I'm going to press the enter key. And as soon as I do, you'll notice at the bottom it says two bar stats. It's like a question. Are you sure you want two bar stats? Well, yes I am, so I press enter again. And now I get two bar stats across the top and I see my data all showing up here. As you can see here, the sample mean is equal to 14.857. Which sample would that be? Well, X is the predictor or list 1, and if we scroll down we'll see that Y is list 2, the criterion. 
So X bar means list one, the data, whatever data you put in list one. So all the X's, in fact, sum of X, sum of X squared, the sample standard deviation for X, uh, the population standard deviation for the X scores. It tells us there were seven of them. Now notice as I scroll down, I get the Y scores. At the very top here, I see the mean of the Y scores. Now that's list two. The sum of the Y, the sum of the squared Y's, the standard deviations. Now also here get the sum of X, Y, that's the cross products. I get the usual stats, the minimum X, the minimum Y's, and that gives me all my descriptive stats for the two variables. I go back to stat because what I really want now after I get these basic uh, uh, descriptive stats is I now need the Pearson R. To do that, I will scroll over using the scroll over key and I'll scroll to tests. And with the test highlighted, I'm now going to use the scroll down bar and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and keep going, keep going until it comes to a stop. Oh, it wraps back around, so I'm going to go back down again. What I'm looking for is Lin Reg T test. There it is. Now, the calculator names for things is a little odd, so don't worry about it. The Lin Reg T test is how we get a Pearson R. Once we have this one highlighted, we're now ready to press enter. And you'll notice a blinking cursor shows up at L1. That blinking cursor is asking where is the X list, the predictor variable. It's in list 1. This is by default. You can change the list by pressing second function and then one of the number keys that have the L1, L4, L5, L3 have the list designation written above them. But in default mode, list 1, list 2 is always what we want for the X and the Y. Uh, we now can just simply scroll down and ignore most of the rest of this. It's all set up and we want to scroll to calculate. And once we get the calculate flashing, we are now ready to press enter. And I pressed enter. It took a moment to do the calculations and then it comes up with a lot of information. <laughs> most of which we don't need. Let's scroll down. Notice a down arrow key means there's more information below so we scroll down and at the bottom we find R equal. That R equal is exactly what we're after. The Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, the Pearson R, is equal to 0.895974423. We like to have two decimal places so we'll call this 0.89. Ooh, 0.8959 we should round up to 0.90. We would like to have the degrees of freedom, easy to calculate, n minus 2, but the calculator, if we scroll up, will find the degrees of freedom equals 5. Now there's a lot of other numbers in here we can just ignore for now. We're going to learn about those, oh, I don't know, next week or the week after that or in the future. Okay, for now you see how to get uh, the basic uh, statistics you need for two variables as we have in the Pearson R and how to calculate the Pearson R itself. Pretty cool. That's all there is to it. I go back to stat mode. I can now edit and see my original raw data. Erase it, get set up for the next problem. Bye.